and we are live. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm so excited. Today, we are doing State of the Angular Ecosystem. I feel like we haven't done this in quite some time, but love to see uh, some, new, some new faces, some old faces. And I just want to make sure, okay, this is running. Until I see that number of y'all watching, I'm always like, is it on? Is it on the YouTubes? Is it not? Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my slides really quickly. For those of you in uh, out there on the internet, um, please tell us where you're from. Where are you calling in from? <laughs> what Angular problems are you having that we can solve today? Now, this is the state of the Angular ecosystem. Uh, oops, let me go ahead and go here. Okay, uh, thank you so much for my company, The Set Labs, for sponsoring this. Without the hard work of our team, definitely would not be able to put this together or put together so many amazing events. So thank you so much. Generally, if you need consulting help, we are here. We have some amazing clients. So if you want to come work for us, uh, we're definitely always hiring. Uh, yeah. And we just have a lot of fun. So 100% remote worldwide, or if you need help with your Angular stuff, always happy to chat. Uh, we've been doing some really cool open source stuff. Uh, not as cool as Yuri and NX and Jordan with Cypress and Brandon and just way cooler people out here. But we do love giving back to the community. And we have created this resource for you all called framework.dev. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you go to angular.framework.dev and kind of just want to see like a whole curated list of things about Angular, um, when it comes to like libraries, if you need to compare libraries and different things like that, uh, definitely go to angular.framework.dev. Brandon, hopefully we see a PR soon from your, <laughs> your library, which I don't, I'm, I don't know if we've added it yet. Uh, if you're new to the this dot ecosystem, we do have a lot of really amazing events. Women in Tech Monthly Mentoring is one of my favorite. Uh, that's coming up tomorrow. <clears throat> so if you just want to hang out and come chat with some amazing women, come and hang out. Uh, we also have React and Vue and Angular Mentoring. Angular Mentoring actually just happened, so it is not on this list. Um, but if you are React or Vue curious, feel free to come by. State of Accessibility for Everyone is also happening on December 13th. And then, of course, Women in Tech Monthly Mentoring happens December again. My name is Tracy. You can follow me on Twitter at Lady Leet. I'm always happy to chat. No, unfortunately, I do not have a Mastodon yet. I need to get on that. Um, and I'm joined by my co-host, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer at this.labs, and you can follow me by the handle that is visible on the screen. <laughs> yes, and it's <laughs> underscore underscore. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> One underscore isn't enough. <laughs> and we have some amazing panelists today, and these folks will be giving us um, some quick updates on kind of the things that they're working on, and then we will go into kind of like a Q&A type session. So again, if you have uh, questions or anything like that, feel free to post them in chat. I love seeing all the folks coming in from Portugal, Tustin, Cape Town, Dakar, Jamaica, Brazil. Oh, what flag is that, y'all? Marcus. <laughs> is it the Netherlands? Ugh, it's terrible. Bonnie, you'll have to <laughs> tell me with that one. Hi, James. It's the Netherlands. Okay, good. See? Ah. Oh. Saved myself. Thank you. Um, and Henri. Okay, so um, yay. Sweden. Oh my God. Were we both wrong, Bonnie? <laughs> Anyways, um, so amazing panelists. We'll have Yuri talking about NX, Jordan talking about the amazing stuff with Cypress and Angular. Uh, Bonnie, Angular Nation. So excited to chat about that. Uh, Ari is going to be talking about some amazing updates that he has as well. Brandon will be talking about NGRX. Well, actually, AnalogJS. Actually, Brandon, I don't know if you have any NGRX updates, but Analog for sure. Um, and then David will be giving us an update on Firebase. So wanted to go ahead and say thank you so much for joining and kind of get right into it. Um, so I'll just eeny, meeny, miny, mo and say, Brandon, do you want to give us updates first? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know which one I'll go first. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about analog first because it's, it's something I've been working on uh, recently also with 
NGRX and things. But uh, if you don't know, Analog is a meta framework that we're building for Angular. Um, you can go to the docs at analogjs.org. Uh, but yes, it has file-based routing. Uh, we just landed a PR to introduce uh, API routes for the framework and uh, working on other features uh, such as static site generation and SSR. So um, it's all open source. You can check it out. Uh, you can find the GitHub repo uh, on the doc site. And if you want to contribute, always looking for contributors. So there's that on that. Um, on the NGRX side of things, we've been working on the, the upcoming features for uh, V15. Uh, probably one of the most um, talked about ones is standalone APIs for all the NGRX libraries. So provide store, provide state. We actually introduced some of these or tweaked the API some because uh, we had an opportunity there to kind of simplify those. Uh, but those are the most of the bigger features for NGRX store itself. Uh, so we introduced the standalone APIs for those and also introduced some improvements in component stores with selectors and things. So uh, some new exciting stuff coming up there. And we're still working on some other things. Uh, if you check out the NGRX repo, you can definitely check those out also and see what's uh, upcoming. So, yep. Amazing, Brandon. So excited about Meta Framework for Angular because who needs one? We need one. Yes, that's <laughs> React's true. getting all the fun. <laughs> yeah, shout out to uh, Fireship also. They mentioned analog on the, in the latest video, which I was uh, surprisingly excited, uh, surprised about. So I was glad to see that. Gotta love our fellow GDE um, giving yep. shout outs to um, amazing technologies and frameworks happening. Um, Brandon, definitely post uh, the GitHub. I know Henri was like, wait, where is uh, where's the link? Yep, um, so that we can, show. yeah, but definitely check out Analog and obviously really exciting things happening with NGRX as always. Um, I will move on to Jordan. Hey, hey. so I uh, have a, several exciting things i think since we did the last one of these was uh i don't know like six months ago it's been a, it's been a, uh, several months but since then we released uh official support for uh component testing in angular which is a feature that uh, a lot of people have been really excited about uh we've had uh, a lot of really good feedback and a lot of adoption with it so far um it's kind of really it's it shocked me to be honest. Not shocked me, but it's been like a really nice, uh, you know, confirmation that hey, this this is something the community wants and it's helping solve problems that they have. So, um, for those of you who uh, are not familiar with component testing, essentially, uh, Cypress historically has done end-to-end -end testing, but it allows you to uh, you now have an ability to basically just mount your components in the browser and still test them the way. Use, uh, users interact with them in the browser, the same things you love, love about Cypress, but you can now do it at the component level. So there's a lot of cool things there. Um, it will have support for uh, Angular 15 when that comes out. Um, and then I know that um, this is probably a good, good segue into someone else, but we've uh, worked really closely with the NX team to get really, uh, to have some uh, really just native first class uh, like generators and just making sure that if you want to, you know, NX and Cypress work, you know, seamlessly together, you know, really, you know, for, for a really long time. And so uh, component testing is, is kind of the same way we have, you know, generators for generating components, uh, executing those tests, uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, if you're in the NX world and you're an Angular user, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of goodies over there too. So. Thank you so much. I feel like I should just say Yuri should go next since he's giving us an update on <laughs> NX. So Yuri, take it, take it away. Natural segue into that. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been releasing uh, NX 15, like um, NX 14, just like a couple of weeks, NX 15, sorry, a couple of weeks ago, like um, just at the same time of NX Conf, which was the first one which you gave like beginning of October. And we have been a lot of focusing uh, there on like, clarifying things in the mon repo space like there have been like package based mon repos integrate mon repos so we try to clarify a lot of those type of things and so we streamlined a lot of our support for simple setups of mon repos where you want to use npm yarn workspace stuff like that 
and and a lot of the ca in, in like a lot of the stuff that we invested is into the caching approach right so we streamlined our task pipelines we have new ways to fine grain do fine grade caching via like inputs where you can really say like what like should be cached when you run a build like which type of files should go into that uh, type of caching approach versus like when you run tests and stuff uh, a lot of that effort uh, has also been going into the actual like docs uh, docs is like we all know how hard it is so we, we can upgrade the whole first of all the natural look and design of our uh, website uh, but also like how we lay out docs uh, how we categorize different types of documentation so hopefully that brings a lot of more clarity because like there's so much we can talk about when we when we are in the next world right so we wanted to kind of like bring more structure into that. And then as, as, as Jordan kind of anticipated, uh, we closely collaborate with Cypress. Uh, as most folks know, like especially from Wrangler world, uh, we are very into like providing migrations, automated updates, scripts and stuff like that. So we cl closely collaborate with them to make sure that we have a smooth upgrade uh, between various tools, including Cypress. Uh, and that also included component testing. So shout out to Caleb from our team. Like he really like put a lot of effort into that, tested it quite a lot and like a lot of large code bases to make sure things are kind of streamlined. Uh, and like durably, the Cypress 11 is already out as far as I know. So there will be support in a couple of days as well. So NX 15.1 is in beta already out. Uh, it should be a couple of days until we kind of push it out as well. Uh, and one thing that we also kind of invest a lot is uh, mostly the like smoothening the whole Angular CLI to an X migration, right? So just like people that have an existing Angular CLI workspace and want to go to an X, they have like a, a, a nice experience. So semi-automated migrations, as well as we, we added a lot of docs around and videos of how you can like, like create multiple, like take multiple CLI instances and migrate them into one monorepo. And there's actually a good, a cool feature that we're working on right now, which we named Nested Projects, which is coming out couple of weeks probably end of november beginning of december uh, which will make this experience even nicer because it makes an x overall much more flexible so keep an eye out for that one amazing i know nx team has a lot of really fun things up their sleeves that i've been hearing about so i can't wait for my stuff to be happening i will move on to ari for his updates yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm currently writing my third book, which is uh, a, pre a, pre a precessor of the first one. I have already written two books about Angular, the, uh, Learning Angular 3rd edition and Angular Projects 2nd edition. So I'm currently writing my third book, which is the Learning Angular 4th edition. Um, it is a book destined for beginners to the Angular framework. It will be a refresh of the previous edition, of course. But I'm really amazed from the simplicity that the Angular CLI <laughs> will have in Angular. Yeah, right, Bonnie, thanks. <laughs> uh, I'm really amazed about uh, from the simplicity that Angu the Angular team has put in the fi 15th version, where in the previous edition, uh, when, you, when, I, when I was writing the book, and uh, you know you need to do a new Angular project. You write ng new, and it scaffolds a lot of files. But in this edition, uh, which comes with Angular 15, of course, um, most of the files uh, files are uh, a bit a lot smaller, right? Uh, smaller files, fewer files. So uh, the learning curve is it will be more easier for beginners to learn Angular. Um, the Learning Angular fourth edition uh, is. It's estimated to be released about uh, uh, February, uh, first days of February, and it is currently in, the, in an early access program from uh, my publisher, Pact. And that means actually that uh, if you want, you can go to the website. Uh, Tracy, I will post a link uh, after I finish my after I finish speaking, and you can go to the website and register so that you can get a sneak peek of. Uh, every chapter early in the process. So actually you will be a part of the process of authoring the book. That's really exciting. Thank you so much. We're so excited. Thanks Bonnie for flashing a preview of the <laughs> book right there that you can read. Um, I will move on to Bonnie for updates. Okay, so Angular Nation is almost at 5,000 people. So that's pretty exciting. 
Uh, we had paused a few things because we were growing and we were having some growing pains. Everything was, there was a lot of automation. Well, there was a lot of uh, admin stuff. So we needed automation. We just relaunched our community channels. So we have now Angular Nation East where our Cetus Bampacos is one of our hosts over there, plus Val and Connie. And then we have Angular Nation West with uh, Jeff Welpley and Kyler and Natty. Super, super fun. We have a testing channel with, uh, well, Jordan um, is one of our one of our often guests in the testing channel. Shai Resnick uh, stops by to see us. And we've got Glenn and Danny and really cool panelists in there. Uh, and then we have the Beginners channel with Tom Eustace and Oye. So all of these channels are free. Uh, and then we also have the experts channel for the more we have, uh, you know, uh, Igor and Pete come from Cloudflare and we've had, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mishko and, and Adam come in and talk about Quick and Party Town. So there's a lot going on, basically. Uh, and I'm working now on relaunching my architect training. I'm doing a lot of mentoring and I'm and a lot of people like I come. I think that they come and they want uh, help with Angular and they do. Angular Nation is basically like one big study group, right? We have a lot of live calls and we encourage people to turn their cameras on and ask for help and talk to and then help each other. Um, and it's a lot of fun, very supportive environment. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so I'm working on architect training. I would think a lot of people are coming to me and asking for help with architecture, but a lot of people, and, and they do, but then we end up talking about um, their jobs and kind of if they're happy in their jobs. And so I've also been doing kind of a lot of career mentoring and helping people find new jobs. And I know some really, really cool uh, Angular architects. So if you're hiring, let me know. So yeah, there's a lot going on, lots of fun. And uh, really the community channels are really a lot of fun because the community channels are free and it's a, it's a Google meet. So you can jump in and actually turn your camera on and talk to people. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. I could go cool. on and on. I love but, it. Yeah, there's always <laughs> something going on over there. No. Yeah. Thank you so much. So definitely mm -hmm. um, check out Angular Nation y'all. Um, Ramon said he just requested to join. So, all right, I'm going to let them in right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's the website? AngularNation.net. You just okay. put in your email address and then you're going to get an invitation to join. Make sure it's not in your spam and then come on in. And, and almost there's, there's some premium training and premium events, but all, almost everything is free. It's like, it's like Stack Overflow, but nicer. Can I say that? It's just like super <laughs> friendly and supportive. Yeah, I see Mansoor. Yes, Mansoor has been in our in Angular Nation for a long time. So yeah, we've had some really cool people uh, coming in right. and, and being community hosts. It's a lot of fun. It's very, yeah. very friendly and supportive. And if you come in and you're just trying to figure out Angular and you don't know what you're doing, we got you because that's <laughs> what we're doing. We're just all trying to figure it out together. And it's just really supportive. And it's not necessarily about, but also with a little bit of, uh, this is why, you know, we have like Aristides, we have Jeff Welpley, we have Shai and Jordan coming in and helping out with the community hosts. The community hosts are amazing and I love them. Um, but also uh, we have the experts there because we need some adult supervision to make sure because there's so much out there about Angular that it's confusing sometimes. Like what tutorial do I listen to? And so it's nice to be able to come in and have um, people doing talks and then the experts there to help out. And it's just all very, very supportive. Shout out to Sonder Alias, who's one of our favorite experts. Uh, Aristides, who's been a supporter since the beginning. Um, and of course, AG Grid, who really helps us a lot. We love AG Grid. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely so much check fun. it out. Angular community is one of the nicest communities, if not the nicest, I have to say, uh, has always been very welcoming, especially when I started doing Angular. I was like, oh my gosh, these people are they're so great. I love it. And NGConf and Angular conferences, you'll find, I feel like, are like family getting together. So definitely, uh, definitely love this community. Um, and last but not least, had to save the best for last, David. <laughs> Firebase, an update on Firebase. There's been a lot of stuff going on lately. Yeah, we, uh, oh my gosh, how long ago was it? Uh, October 18th. Oh, which was super cool. So October 18th was the Firebase Summit. So October 18th, 2022. But all the way back in October 18th, 2015 was also just coincidentally not planned the day Firebase was acquired into Google. And I didn't know that until uh, one of my coworkers uh, who she, Sarah Robinson, shout out, Sarah Robinson, uh, big ML expert. She uh, sent me a message and was just like, happy, you know, 
like uh, Google anniversary day. And I was like about to go on stage for summit. I was like, what? Um, so that was a fun little coincidence, but we, uh, we announced uh, a lot of different things. Um, one of the thing I think is most relevant here is we have integrated the Firebase CLI for doing like deployments. So I'm an Angular developer. I want to deploy an Angular app. We uh, directly integrate with uh, Angular schematics and architect and all that stuff. So when you run Firebase uh, serve or run the Firebase emulators, we just tap into Angular and run the build, the development build for you automatically. So you're not like, let me open up this one terminal where I run the Angular ng serve and then we open up this other terminal or I'm running this other emulator or I'm doing all this different stuff. You just run one command, it builds, it runs, it's great. Uh, and then that also works for deployment. So if you run Firebase deploy, we know we detect what framework you're building. Right now we support next. Uh, I think we're releasing Nux support or soon, uh, depending on stuff with Nux 3. Um, and obviously with Angular, but with Angular Universal support. So if you're like, I want to use Angular Universal, we just deploy out, uh, we generate the cloud function for you, like all the server codes. So you just kind of write your Angular app, your Angular Universal app, and you don't have to worry about any of the server adapter sides to it. We just, we just kind of handle that for you. So that was really cool. Just kind of write some command, write your code as you want to run a deploy, it deploys. And uh, I'm really excited about that feature. Uh, and I was super excited. I'm, I'm going to do my best in this chat to not totally turn it into like an analog uh, like fan chat because I've been so impressed, Brandon, with all the stuff with analog. I've been diving a bit more into it lately because I just really love a lot of the named export stuff, obviously file-based routing, but I love a lot of the, the stuff you've been doing with it. And I'm just like mm, kind of side eye in it while we've been working on it being like, this is so cool. Like I love, and then I saw the low logo for the first time the other week and i was just like that's a good logo i, I think like, brendan's is, blushing this is legit now when she got the the logo <laughs> i was embarrassed like, now yeah so i, I, mean, I, I saw your eyes turning a little red so i think you're actually tearing up too a single tear just rolled down <laughs> my face you can't see it but it was there but yeah, no, I, I, I'm a huge, huge fan. Yeah, like all the, I've been diving into all the little named exports I can do in analog. It's just been super, I'm like, that, that's new and it's cool. And I can't do that outside of analog. And it's V. And if anyone knows me, you know that I've officially changed my last name to David V. Um, no, I'm just, I should do that. Uh, and so I'm a huge V fan. And so uh, analog, I'm a big fan brand. I just wanted to let you all know that. Just, just you're doing, doing great work. Hey, I appreciate that. But yeah, so if anyone, oh. yeah, I'll send, I'll drop more things to stuff in Firebase that we did. Uh, and uh, for anyone who's a big Firestore user, Firestore could do count now. That was that was a big deal. I was big, real happy about that. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll drop a link to all the announcement stuff. Um, but we can go on talking about analog now. I'm just kidding, but we can <laughs> we, we can do that. Yes, we can. We should we should talk <laughs> after this because I, I have a. Uh, <laughs> A big idea. No, uh, we can talk. We can talk. I love big it. ideas. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to hop on this angle uh, on this analog JS train, and uh, since it's a pretty new project, and I think it's a great opportunity uh, to help in the early stages for the community. I wanted mm -hmm. to ask uh, how a, a community member could help with analog JS. Is there like a label on the issues that somebody could look for <laughs> to, on something that isn't scary as a first step <laughs> yeah sure uh i try to do my best about being a good open source citizen and maintainer so i try to label the things like good first issues uh, that people can tackle um and that seems to be worked out pretty well people have took on some of those issues and even some of the ones that that were like bigger ideas that I, that I had that I wanted to uh, add to analog. I've kind of put those ideas out there and people have contributed to those. I mentioned the API routes that we just kind of landed a um, couple of days ago, or yesterday, and maybe, maybe landed at PR yesterday. But uh, Fannis, who is a GDE also, uh, actually worked on that PR to bring that, uh, that functionality there. And the API routes are driven by another project that's called Nitro which is, um, if you're familiar with Nuxt, it's kind of the, the server engine behind Nuxt, but it's like framework agnostic. So you can basically plug it into any framework. So um, I 
I open all the issues, the ones that people want to take, they can. Uh, and then, like I said, I try to keep it, try to review people's things pretty quickly. So uh, and it's definitely helped out because a lot of people have contributed so far and definitely looking to take on uh, more co contributions if people are willing to uh, help out. Yeah, thank you. That's that's very useful. I hope a lot of our viewers will try Yes, I will. I will uh, gladly help you submit a PR if you would like to contribute to the project. You can, you know, hit me up on Twitter or Mastodon. I do have an account there too. I'm like all over the place. So, uh, yeah, definitely check out the repo. And uh, oh, another thing that people could do is like just trying out the project itself. And we have a starter project you can uh, run to try it out and um, file issues, bugs, all these things are contributions. So, uh, definitely encourage that. Amazing, amazing. Uh, so let me switch topics a bit. I we uh, here at this dot we had uh, a training with Jordan recently about Cypress, and I uh, and he introduced component testing for Angular there. I know you've already mentioned that, but I wanted to know like what is the community response on that? Uh, is there something that the uh, people are still missing or something that is coming up in the near future? Yeah, so um, I I didn't, I failed to mention it uh, when I first was sharing and, and Yuri uh, thankfully mentioned, but we just released uh, Cypress 11, um, which basically was um, a GA or general availability, availability release for component testing. So before it was in beta, uh, a lot, a lot of people were maybe concerned about, uh, you know, obviously like adopting it, but um, we've had, you know, tremendous adoption, especially from the Angular community uh, with component testing so far and uh, a lot of really great feedback. Um, we've also had, um, as a shout out to the Angular community, but we've probably had, um, we've probably had the most like substantial, like, um, contributions from the community for, for component testing uh, for the Angular side of things. So that's always great to, you know, when people, when you, you have ideas like Brandon saying, and, and, and you don't necessarily have the time to get to it now, but someone else maybe does like, that's a, a really great, uh, uh, it's a really helpful that we can move quicker on some things. So we've been able to get, um, the community involved with, with some pull requests and, and getting some issues fixed and some new features added, which has been really great. But overall, we've been very, very um, pleased with the, the reception to component testing. I think it's going to, uh, it's difficult because it changes. Like we think about testing in, in, you know, in the triangle and we are like, well, where is it? And like, it doesn't really fit in the triangle. So um, which is like a whole separate topic, but I think, um, to answer the question, yes, like there's been a lot of um, positive feedback from the community. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, we have support for React, uh, we have support for Review, um, as well as Felt, and um, there's some other, um, there's some other like frameworks that are, you know, are basically, cr you know, creating community PRs uh, to add support for those things as well. But uh, the Angular side of things is uh, definitely going very well from our standpoint. So. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And again, segueing back to NX, uh, since the integration with, uh, I remember upgrading to Cypress 10, it was a pretty easy task, which was automated. Is it similarly easy to upgrade to 11? Yeah, totally should be, right? Like we, we try, like that, that, that's one of the things that we try to bake in, especially when you like use an X with the, with the plugin system, right? Like all the plugins usually come with migrations baked in because then you can just run NX migrate at latest and then it would kind of propose you all the kind of migration scripts that would need to be run. Uh, so I didn't look into the V11 upgrade yet, but I know I kind of I'm confident Caleb did a great job there and kind of baked <laughs> in the automated migrations as well. Um, it, for instance, like the like the automated migrations usually always come when we are pretty confident that we can 
basically get you up like at least 90% of the way, right? Pro no, no, most often it's just like a go through and that's it and it works and go ahead, right? But it depends obviously like on you know, the size of the project and the complexity and how much custom stuff you put into there and how much like you like messed around with the configuration, right? So for instance, for the, the Cypress V10 upgrade, what we did is like we have like opt-in migrations, right? So whenever we see, well, this could potentially, like there are some cases where the migration could potentially go wrong, right? We provide more like here's a generator that can run that also migrates you from one version to the next, but you're in full control, right? So you just like upgrade all the stuff and then you run the migration generator and that will then bring you up to the next level, basically. Um, so yeah, it, it should totally be fully automated. Uh, that's really cool. I I remember migrating to version 15 recently, and it had like a couple of hiccups that probably if we had full control over like what's happening, that would be amazing. Uh, so I guess from from now on it will be even better. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. The best thing there is like for instance, what we do like with the migration is we usually just kind of generate a script, like a migrations JSON file where all the migrations are in, right? So you can actually go through, I don't know, not a lot of folks actually do it. Like they're just like, oh yeah, it's good. And let's, let's go ahead, right? Which is <laughs> perfectly fine because you can always just do a git reset, right? And you're, you're good again, again. But like the migrations is actually something that I encourage people to look into, right? So you can even run them separately, split them up into different files, run them like in like different increments, right? So just run Angular upgrade first and like the, the next piece and, and stuff like that. So you, you can control it to that level for sure. Um, but yeah, for, for bigger upgrades, we usually kind of provide a separate generator at all, like for just giving you that piece of upgrade separately. Yeah, and I must say that one feature that you've mentioned for... Uh, cache inputs is is amazing. I was able to finally fix the caching uh, on one of our, our like targets, and because previously we had to like do no cache for that because it yeah wasn't... that that one yeah that one actually improved the even the cache hits like it improved them dramatically, right? Because now obviously like if you run a build, uh, you might not want to ditch the cache like if you just change a spec file or something, right? So like things like that, even or even like just a markdown file, right? If you if you change a markdown file, well, you probably don't want to like discard the build task or something. Maybe the published task because markdown might go into the package, right? But not the build task. And so we, we even when you generate now a new workspace, uh, I think there are already some like sensible presets in there, right? Which we figure like those are probably some inputs that you want to have to find, but you can always change them and mess around with them at your own. Uh, but yeah, that was that was actually a good feature. I really love that one. Uh, yeah, thank you for that <laughs> extensive response. Uh, yeah, so do we have any questions from the community? Let me look at the chat. <laughs> I don't think there's that many yet, but feel free to keep posting them. I guess one of my questions for all of y'all, just you know, within this Angular ecosystem and um, being a part of it, like what recently has been released with Angular that you've been like really excited about? Or is there anything like upcoming with Angular that you're really excited about? Or maybe features generally that you're hoping to be really soon? <laughs> you know, I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but I think Analog JS is this really good thing that's being added to the <laughs> community. Uh, yeah, hasn't brought hasn't brought up yet. Uh, so, um, but but I do want to touch back further on. So, Brandon, before he went on this, I, I, there's a bit of like, I wouldn't say like inside behind the scenes information. Brandon, before he went on this journey, was like messaging me about it and his ideas and stuff, and I was just like. This all sounds like a lot and like, you know, this sounds really cool, but it sounds like ideas. So it's really, but it's really cool to see a lot of those things kind of like materialize into like real things. So as I've been going through, one of the things that I think it's super great is you have all these named exports to do things that like usually are difficult to do within like uh, back in 2000 and. 17, I built like this little library that would allow you to like inject static data at like an app module level. And it was so gnarly <laughs> to be able to do it. And like you had to use this like really gnarly injection token. It was to the point where I was like, I might as well just like write data to a script in the DOM and just pull it from like there, there really was no benefit over doing it that way. And so a lot of the stuff that I've seen like uh, 
that I've seen with the name exports and being able to load data in and set certain route param states. It's just super cool. Um, also, the the Astra integration. I want to I want to talk more about that. Like, because you know, I, for the longest time you couldn't use Angular with Astro, and now now you can. And I, if you know, I just I don't know. I think it's amazing. Yeah, for sure. The there, there was a lot of pieces that kind of had to uh, come into place to for the Astro integration to work. Uh, one of those things, which we can tie this back in, was standalone components in, in Angular. Um, I had tried to make that integration work before, but like throwing modules in front of components uh, and trying to put that together with Astro just wasn't a good experience. Uh, but when standalone components finally materialized, uh, shout out to the team, by the way, uh, for they introduced that. And so it kind of got the wheels turning on that uh, also. But then there was uh, Astro at one point used another build tool called Snowpack, uh, which kind of threw another like wrench in the in the in the process of trying to make that work. Uh, but then when Astro project moved to Vite then it kind of unlocked the ability to uh, add that integration in a lot easier. Um, and so the V plugin that I had kind of worked on was functioning already. So it was more or less trying to tie the Astro integration to the uh, V plugin. And then that kind of opened the door to be able to drop Angular components into Astro projects. Uh, for those who are not, not familiar, Astro is a very cool project for building uh, websites, uh, they say build fast websites faster or something like that. I believe that's the tagline, but uh, it's pretty great. I've been using it for a long time, uh, just even in my like personal blog and everything back when it, when it was alpha days, and it's come a long way since then. So I was excited to get that integration working with Angular because I think, you know, Angular components are pretty nice and uh, we should be able to use those in projects like Astro also. Well, what's super cool about it is, is that, so Astro has like a whole like coordination between like different frameworks and everything. Um, but you, uh, you can write, it's not just like, oh, it's just another way to write Angular or whatever, but it's actually like, I love it because you basically opened the door for saying like, I'm going to build an Angular component for my blog and it's just going to stay as HTML and CSS and, or, or if I want to, I can use, you can, you've tapped into Astro's coordination where you can be like client load, uh, or is visible and stuff like that. And I think stuff like that's just so cool that, uh, you know, you've really taken on this project where you're like, we got angular, we got this meta framework idea, we got like Astro and you've done such a fantastic job of coordinating all these ecosystems together. Cause I, I manage three different Astro sites, um, myself, cause I've, uh, also on the same bandwagon as you from the very beginning, loving the idea of it. And it was, it was very sad that you couldn't use that angular was not quite there and you, you, you blazed that path. So I, it's awesome that if you want to write a, I want to write this component in angular. Cool. If I want to write it in view, cool. And it just works. It's amazing. Yeah, for sure. I think it, I think it also, uh, gives us a glimpse into the future of if you could just drop angular components, like directly into the template, so to speak. Uh, even though we're still, you know, using string templates and all that, but uh, that that experience is pretty nice, and I think it would it would slot in well uh, if done right. Uh, of course, upstream and Angular, so definitely want to see a push for that too. So when's one dot <laughs> One dot of analog? Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I am look pushing towards moving the plugin out of the plugin is, you know, technically an alpha state release right now, but I'm definitely looking into moving it into beta uh, status here pretty soon. Um, we'll see how things go once we, uh, you know, release a version for Angular uh, V15 projects, but, uh, but the reception has been pretty good and, you know, we've been fixing issues as they've come along. So uh, definitely looking to make it more stable and, approachable for people who you know definitely want to give it a try so amazing people, go give it a try and uh let me know or let us know because it's not just me contributors have been helping also nice i know uh we at this dot adopted astro pre 1.0 and that hurt a little bit <laughs> i mean we loved it it was great uh, you know astro is amazing and i same thing for analog i'm like okay 
all right, when can we, I mean, yes, we can play, but like, when can we like adopt it? You know? So I've been told by the team when it's 1.0, we can actually adopt it. <laughs> Still feeling a little pain from the Astro pre 1.0 adoption. <laughs> no, but very, very excited, Brandon. And um, this is funded via GitHub projects, right? Is that right? Uh, yes. Or GitHub it, sponsors? GitHub, GitHub sponsors. sponsors, yes. If you uh, want to sponsor the project, you can uh, sponsor it on GitHub sponsors. Or if you have some other ideas for sponsorship or something like that, uh, feel free to hit me up. So I'm all, I'm always open to listen to ideas and things. Thank you. And also, by the way, obviously, David East has been hired as your DevRel head of DevRel. <laughs> true. It's true. You didn't, you didn't notice or agree to that, but I'm uh, sorry. Sometimes just life happens like that. He, he's just going to take 5% <laughs> equity, you know? <laughs> okay. I and think at I, this point, equity is like GitHub issues. So I don't oh, want yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> all I did was yeah. invest in all the things that David loves, like Astro and Veet and things. So it was an easy pool. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I think uh, I would like to ask a couple of maybe community-related questions, uh, uh, Bonnie, you especially. So you've, you've mentioned Angular Nation, that the community is growing. 5,000 folks are already in there. Almost 5,000. Almost 5,000. Not 5, yet. Almost. Okay. There's people joining like all through this call, so we might reach it. I don't know. We okay. need a few hundred more. Keeping fingers crossed for that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, is it mostly a community for like uh, beginning beginner people to to learn, or is there still a place? Well, that's for, what like, I more... thought. That's kind of what I was thinking. But actually, we get, we really get a lot of like architects and team leads because when you know, I always try to be approachable, and people come up to me and ask me questions because I'm a goofball, right? Uh, which I encourage. And, and it's surprising to me how many people think they're beginners, but when they start asking me questions, they're actually really advanced architectural questions. So uh, so then I find out like, you know, you, you've been doing this for years. Uh, uh, so no, we actually have a lot of more, much more advanced conversations as well. So everyone, but it's great because, you know, we have the Friday social every week and we have people, all kinds of people come in and ask questions about Angular and we're just chit chatting and, you know, hanging out. Uh, we have beginner questions and expert questions kind of all mixed in together. And I love the fact that our experts treat the beginners with just as much respect as they do the architects. And it's just like, everybody's, yeah. And I think a lot of people feel like they're beginners, but then they get in and then they start actually helping the beginners. And then they're like, okay, I have actually a lot to offer. And so there's helping, you know, you're asking questions and then answering questions all kind of mixed in together. We're all like a big study group, you know? Yeah, I remember even like uh, helping out the NG girls and uh, Shmuel, I was encouraging uh, the attendees to like, after this, you actually can help someone, somebody else. It, it, yeah, like you guys help each other and then let me know if you need help and then, and then you kind of get them going. And it's really about getting a lot more people to open up uh, and especially people who are kind of feeling like they're doing it all alone and they're not really having that much confidence. And then when they come in and they join the group and then we've got, you know, like Jordan and Ari and Sonder and we can go and ask all the GDEs and we get everybody together. Um, then they feel a lot more confident going back to their team and going, okay, this is what we're going to do. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And, uh, the, the mentoring, uh, a lot of people come to me and they want to be GDEs. So I try to help them with that and help. And this is one of the reasons why we have the community channels so that people can come in. Like if you've never done a technical talk before and you don't know where to start, but you kind of want to like, you know, people said like, how do you get to where we're at? How do you get to, to be doing stuff like this? Maybe you want to speak at conferences or you want to like be a team lead or an architect, but like, how do you get there? So then you, this is a place for baby steps. Like you can just start, like turn your camera on, teach us something, kind of start to like get familiar with that. And then it goes from there. And then you get support. That's what we're here for. Yeah, this is amazing. I, I remember that speaking at even meetups is really scary. It's terrifying. Course. Gil said he's been using Angular for five years and still feels like a beginner. This is exactly, we're here for you, Gil. This is exactly what I'm seeing. Like people think they're, people feel like a mess. People feel like a beginner, but when they actually come in and start having conversations, they're very knowledgeable. 
So it's just filling in the gaps and like getting everybody to kind of, you know, help each other. Amazing. That's Amazing. what we do. Yeah. You know what I always say about speaking at meetups or any speaking, like a lot of people, they think like standing on a huge stage in front of people is like really terrifying. But when you stand on a really big stage, they have all these really bright lights in front of you and you can't see anything. You just, it's just, you're just blinded. So you don't even know if there's anyone in the like crowd it just could be you up there. But when you go to a meetup, you can see everyone's like pupils. You can see like the color of everyone's eyes. You can see everything and it's terrifying. It is like, you know, it's so much easier to step on the blinding stage with like thousands <laughs> of people in front of you. You can see anything, you know, but when you can see like someone, you know, just like looking at their phone or do whatever. Oh my gosh, it's terrifying. So I always tell people, no meetups, those are the hardest. You actually helped me a lot, David, when I was first starting to kind of dip my toe into public speaking because it was terrifying. And that's when you had the whole, uh, you were trying to learn to ride the skateboard and you kept falling off and you were like showing yourself falling off the skateboard over and over and over again. And I loved that. And for me, that was really like, it's, it's okay for you to like post your, you know, along the way, you don't have to wait until you're perfect. You can like post as you go along and your progression and that's okay. So thank you for that, for making um, that okay. I think I was just posting the footage I had because if I only posted me landing things, it would be like three seconds every week of uh, of me doing something. Because in skateboarding, <laughs> it's just hours of lay falling down, and so I had I had to post something. So I, I didn't know I was helping anyone about that. I was just like, look at me, I I fell again. It had yeah, yeah. This is a it, this it was is helpful. A, this is a good reminder to like everybody who is not entitle a junior developer. Uh, I think once you get to like senior developer or architect or mid-level or whatever, you think that like you have to, you know, it's like, you know something. So you have to be on the internet like, you know, and it's like, oh my God. And I feel like, you know, once you get to that point, you, you get stuck and you don't, you don't want to produce something because you feel like you have to have the best idea or something new or something flashy or something, whatever. But, um, you know, going back to my learning Angular days, right? When when it's just like, I'm just posting stuff because I'm excited about it. I'm so excited about the new Angular router. This is so cool. How do you use it? Whoa, I created a route. Like that type of stuff was so, you know, inspiring for myself. And, you know, again, for those folks, we're always looking for new Angular content out in the community. And like, you should post the stuff you're learning about, you know, like whether it's, you know, the Cypress Angular stuff or whether it's like the new stuff you're learning with the next or whether it's like, posting about analog and the stuff you're learning with random stuff or, you know, David or any like new fire Firebase features that are having, not you specifically, David, but if you're, <laughs> if you're doing that or if you read Ari's book and you like learn something, all of that stuff is like so valuable to the community. And we always talk about as an Angular community, how we like don't have enough amazing content out there. So here's the people that will retweet your content. Please just write. <laughs> Yeah, write it even just for yourself, right? Like, yes. uh, me for me personally, like write it for your future self, right? Like, it, it sounds like silly to some degree, right? But like that, that's how I started, for instance, my blog, right? And so you start, like, maybe you put, like, after some time, put out uh, analytics, like five people were reading it, right? It's like, whatever, right? And then like you check back in like half a year later and you have like hundreds of hundreds of people and hundreds of thousands of people and you're like, what is going on, right? So it's, it's really just like write for yourself because it's, it's, it's even easier for that, right? It's like your public notebook. Uh, we learn about analog jazz and Astro and stuff. Like you can, you can set up a new block really, really easily uh, nowadays. So it's like basically no effort at all. Can so, I yeah. add something else, Tracy? Yeah. I see a lot of people and I, and even probably people watching now that are comparing themselves to us because we've been doing this for years and, you know, we've, some of us have known each other for a really long time. But here's the thing, if you've been doing Angular for years, because I hear so much that people don't feel like experts and they never feel like experts because they're looking at these experts who are, who, who are like, we're still learning too, right? But there are so many people who are just picking it up now. There are people out there trying to learn this kind of stuff that are confused. The minute you turn around and start helping other people who are learning behind you, it's so good for your confidence. And, and then you don't feel like such a mess because anyways, I'm just saying, don't compare yourself to us because if you turn around and look at the beginners, there's so many people out there that like you have so much to offer right now. And I always was worried about asking stupid questions, <laughs> and, but I asked so many stupid questions and that's how I got here. That's how I learned. Right. So it's really, yeah, 
I would just encourage everybody, if you don't feel like an expert yet, the, like, none of us really feel, I remember asking Brandon years ago, Brandon, why aren't you talking more? And he's like, I have imposter syndrome. I'm like, don't you know you wrote RX, uh, NGRX? Like, well, how could you have imposter? How could we, any of us? And it's uh, it's scary to get up on stage. It's scary to to teach because we think we're going to screw something up. But I really think it's helpful. I think everybody should. And that's really how we got here. Because when we all started, we were all messes. All of us. <laughs> we're still messes. You just don't see it. But we are. Raise your I hand if you're a mess. <laughs> I definitely agree. I'm all uh, a mess. Yeah. I gave my, my first conference talk that I ever gave was at NGConf. And that was because uh, Joe Eames reached out to me and he was like, hey, you want to give a talk on the router? I was like, okay. <laughs> Not knowing what I was signing up for, but uh, I felt like it was a good opportunity to, to, like I said, step out of that, step out of comfort zone, try to help teach some other people, learn something along the way. Uh, so we all, like I said, like Brian said, we all got to start from somewhere, so. Definitely agree with that. And you and Mike got actually really, really polished over time to where you guys yeah. were like killing it on stage. <laughs> like you guys just got so professional. And the I was I remember watching you guys one time with the puns. I think it was Colorado, and I was mm -hmm. just dying. Because, yeah, it was fun. You guys. That's probably fun. that's probably our most memorable uh, <laughs> talk together. When you're like pretending to be irritated with him, but it yeah. was so funny. <laughs> hey, open yeah. source with friends is always better. So that's what I <laughs> yes, saying. yes. I think uh, <laughs> I love all the raising of hands in the channel as well. I know Jason says um, boilerplate. Yeah, we remember. <laughs> we remember. Chris, do you have any additional questions, or should we move to some questions in the chat, or maybe one uh, final one about like maybe giving back to the community? Mm -hmm. uh, I know Ari that you are maintaining Angular Docs in Greek, and I was wondering. Do you have any tips for somebody who would like to do such an effort for their native language? I'm talking for myself, I don't know, Polish. I think it might be really useful for like people from other, different countries to like uh, who are just beginning to not be scared of this English documentation, I know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, it's hard to maintain a translated version of the Angular.io because you need to be consistent and you need to be ready that the community may not help you 100%. So it's up to you to to do the the dirt job, you know. So currently, um, I decided to be as more closely to the Angular.io infrastructure as possible. Uh, so if you are familiar with running Angular.io, then you can very easily host your own version of uh, the your own translated version. You just need to translate Markdown files, but this needs a manual uh, process. I mean, it's very difficult to automate things uh, when something has been changed. You need to uh, monitor the Angular repository to see what files have been changed. You need to set up this type of uh, manual interactions by yourself. So. Uh, I would say that you need to devote a lot of time to okay. maintain for such initiative. And I, Chris, say, I, I love automation, so I might take the challenge. <laughs> no, so I, if, yep. I was saying, I'm super interested in this because so I, I've been learning Spanish for the past year and a half or so. And so I write my blog posts in Spanish and English for, for fun. And, um, uh, and I even do recordings of both too, because I made like an audio player, you know, just like Yuri was saying, you just, just write stuff, you know? And um, I find that it's so difficult to maintain because technical terms, some need to be translated and some don't. And that's really difficult <laughs> to, to find that line. And then also it is very difficult when you are getting into colloquial terms. Like I write, uh, I write in lots of puns and then I'm like, oh, this does not translate at all. Uh, that only worked because that rhymed and that this doesn't rhyme anymore. Uh, or like that works because it it matters because culturally it makes sense in, in, in a, like an English speaking context, but it doesn't make sense here at all. So that to me is just super fascinating. And I'm only doing my own personal blog posts. I could not imagine like an entire technically instructive set because um, we do lots of auto translations on the Firebase site. There's certain ones we do by hand, but 
a lot of it. It's just, it's super, it's very difficult. So that is, it's amazing that you're undertaking that task. And also thank you for the warning. <laughs> hey, Ari, can you turn your, just tip your camera down a little bit because I feel like you're, you're hiding behind this name, name plate and we want to see you. And I just want to tell you guys, Ari is one of the sweetest, nicest, kindest experts that we have. And he's a little shy at first, but he's the nicest guy. And I love this guy. And he's got a heart of gold. Go buy his book. He's amazing. <laughs> we love you, Ari. You can hide I love you, too. <laughs> just wanted to, to chime in the conversation about uh, the GD. Just wanted to say one thing. When someone asks me, uh, how can I become a GD? Am I ready? I say them the, an analogy with NGRX. If you are in doubt, then you are not. maybe you are not ready. I don't know if you understood it. Are you saying like if you're in doubt, like if you do you need if you yeah, need it's NGRX? like it's like the state management. Yeah, it's like the state management. Yeah. I remember. See, I say I, when they're in doubt, they need to go to the community channels and practice and just like yeah, dip one toe yeah. in and just like do something like in front of a small group, get some feedback and see how that goes, maybe, and then reconsider. That's right. Because it's easier if there's support. I say when it, if you're in doubt, you should go write your you should go and write your own state management library because that's what everybody eventually does. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and then come back. Brandon and makes have it a look easy. Oh no, it's it's the team. I cannot I cannot take credit for uh, all things in JRX. Definitely a team effort. <laughs> You just, I know how you write your own state manager library. All you have to do is use our, our, our XJS, and then you just need to uh, use the merge operator and then uh, <laughs> just map over those. And that's yep. it. That's, those are events, right? That's all, that's all NGRX that's does, it. right? I mean, it's yeah. like, it's like 10, it's like 15 lines of code and we, the rest of <laughs> right. the rest of it is just boilerplate code that we just, you know, that we just sprinkle on top for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I, you know, Ben is actually in London right now at, I think it's called Modern Front End. So he wasn't able to come give an RxJS update, sadly. But uh, all of these folks, y'all, I mean, you know, we have a, quite a few people watching. And um, I know there's a lot of friends in the community, which is so great to reconnect with everybody. Uh, we do have Angular mentoring as well. Um, I don't know how often it is. But anyways, if you go to Angular meetup.com you'll actually see uh when we have that and we will have state of angular soon as well so um all these folks are on twitter so if you don't feel connected to the angular community or you're new or whatever it is find all these folks on twitter um, and you know, everybody is really nice to slide into their DMS. We're always happy to chat and help you along your angular journey. Um, and, you know, stay tuned for all these amazing updates. Uh, definitely really cool stuff happening in the community. And thank you all for coming and sharing. And again, just being a part of angular. I always get like warm and fuzzies when I do angular events. So, <laughs> um, Make sure to check us out next time. And hopefully some of the ladies, I will see you all at the Women in Tech Monthly Mentoring tomorrow. All right. See you all soon. Bye. See you. Bye.